Well, welcome back to our Bible study on the book of Revelation. And um, I hope, it is, as I said before, I hope this is a blessing to you. And I know it can be a little bit difficult, uh, but we have all the lessons in the past still on the uh, Revelation to John site on Facebook, the group. And so I hope that you're part of that. And uh, if you're watching me and you're not a part of that, I would encourage you to go to that site because it's got all the lessons lined up from the newest to the oldest. So it's got from lessons number one up to including 17 to this point. And we're doing lesson 18 today. And uh, we're moving along pretty well. Uh, we're, we're not, we're about halfway through the study, uh, although uh, we're not halfway through the book of Revelation. We're starting uh, Revelation chapter 8 today and uh, I'd like to say that this is pleasant reading but it's not it's it's ch uh, not only challenging but it can be downright scary uh, but we can also see how the things are lining up like all the dominoes are in place for all these things to happen when we look at the pandemic and all the issues going around that we can see the world economies all in difficulty we can see our own country and most of the countries of the world going heavily very heavily into debt uh, we can see inflation interest rates rising and all this leads points to a, a world dom a world government totally different than what we're familiar with today i'm going to read from cha uh, chapter 8 Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Get my glasses focused here. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now this silence that uh, uh, reminds us uh, of uh, sort of a, uh, it's a break. And uh, the silence described reminds us of the doxology penned by Habakkuk in the Old Testament, the Old Testament prophet. But the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth be silent before him. The half hour of silence in Revelation 8 comes to a, a, a very dramatic contrast to the shouts of praise and playing of harps that we've heard up to this point. Suddenly everything, all activity, all sound throughout heaven ceases with this opening of this seventh seal. And we find in this account, we find we have seven angels who are given trumpets to sound. And these seven trumpets are part of this uh, ending event, which is the opening of the seventh seal. We've had the six seals open, then we had this silence, this break, uh, and then we go into the, the seventh. And these seven trumpets are all part of this. And it's the event, which is the opening of the, of the seventh seal. Now, these seven angels were impressive we are told that they are angels who stand before god a, re a reference which calls to mind the story of luke of the angel who visits zachariah at christmas time to announce the birth of john the baptist and the angel told zachariah uh, what he and his wife elizabeth would name the baby and the special kind of man this child would one day become and zachariah asked, how can i be sure of this i'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. And the angel replies, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. It was this same angel Gabriel who announced the coming of the birth of Jesus to the Virgin Mary. And we find all this in Luke, at the very beginning of the book of Luke. Luke. In Revelation 8. We are introduced to seven angels who stand in the presence of God. And 
I suggest to you that these are not just angels, but archangels, the highest class of angels, which were given an extremely important task, the sounding of seven trumpets. Another of these angels, when we talk about archangels, would be Archangel Michael, which appears in the book of Daniel. And before they blow their trumpets, John records a dramatic scene. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. Now I'm reading uh, chapter 8, Revelation chapter 8, verses 3 to 5. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Now in Revelation, the nation of Israel is once again in the forefront of, of history, in, in the forefront of events. And this angel would appear again in connection with the uh, with Israel and with the nation of Israel. We'll see that as we move on a little farther. Now, what is the meaning of this censer, a golden censer? Now, not everybody probably knows what a censer is, but those who uh, are in uh, some of the uh, sacramental uh, the uh, uh, denominations. A censer uh, is a container in which incense is burned, and it's a symbol of a of a priestly function. And we're told throughout the book of Hebrews and many of the New Testament passages that Jesus is our high priest. For example, Paul tells us that Jesus, our high priest, is at the right hand of God and also interceding for us. Clearly, the function we see this angel performing is a priestly function. And he takes the fire from the altar of brass, adds to it the incense of the prayers of the saints, and offers them on the golden altar of incense before God. The burning incense in this passage is symbolic of the prayers of the saints. And that's what just said in the, that reading. The prayers of the saints, imploring God to act. Then the image of the angel hurling the fiery censer to the earth is a symbol of the answered prayer. The time has come for God to act. And he, so he hurls it down to the earth. And just look at the result of this God's action. There's thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, a great earthquake. And these are sights and sounds which mark, mark the close of the age of mankind upon the earth, but they also mark the beginning of God's kingdom upon the earth. Now these sounds of global upheaval and the violence of nature accompany the end of each of the series of the, of the seven, the seven seals and the seven trumpets and seven bowls of wrath of God at the opening of the seventh seal. And we learn that when the great angel casts the fire of God upon the earth, the moment has come when God fully and finally answers the prayers of his people. The seventh trumpet appears to usher in what God calls the great tribulation. Now, in Jesus' Olivet uh, Discourse in Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse 21, for example, in that area, there he says, For then there will be great distress or tribulation, unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. So Jesus is describing what we are about to see. The ultimate of God's judgment coming, taking place upon the earth. And in Revelation chapter 8 verse 6 we come to one of the most difficult sections of, of the book to interpret. Then the seven angels 
who had the seven trumpets, prepared to sound them. The sevenfold judgment is about to begin. It's, it's uh, commenced with these, these angels blowing their trumpets. We'll continue on with this in our, uh, in our uh, ne next section. And, but we'll stop here. We've gone to, through 10 minutes. And we'll continue on with the first angel uh, in our next lesson. May God bless you. Uh, I hope that this is being a blessing to you. And uh, as I said before, we have, uh, this is lesson 18. So now uh, we will have all 18 lessons posted on the Facebook site, uh, it's a group site called the Revelation to Join. God bless you all, and thanks for joining me.